you co-wrote Centuries, the Fall Out Boy song Centuries, which was on no fewer than 700 TV shows and movies and commercials. Huge. It was yeah. an insane experience. So tell me about, because I think of Fall Out Boy, you think about a band, you don't think about them inviting a co-writer in. So tell me about that experience. So, you know, that was actually a really, it was not a normal um, experience, like where we would go in there. Actually, what happened was um, Justin Tranter, who is very, very famous songwriter now, you know, he's written for Justin Bieber, for Selena Gomez, like he did Sorry. I mean, like it's endless. Sometimes he has seven songs battling in the top 10, like now. But yeah. this was our first platinum. So he, had, he hadn't yet to take his, his meteoric rise. Um, so we used to write together a lot. And uh, myself, him and JR wrote him. We were, in, we were working on some songs and uh, we just took about 15 minutes. We just had this idea. Justin came in, he was like, what about this? Remember me for centuries. And I was like, oh, I love that. And I started imagining like being on a chariot of fire. And I think we wrote the hook in 10 minutes, you know, and I sang it. Uh, the legends are told, some turn to dust, turn to gold. You will remember me. Remember me for centuries. Hey, hey, uh, whoa, hey. I mean, that's essentially an Indian melody. Hey, uh, remember me for centuries. So we sang it. And I was thinking, okay, maybe Rihanna, Jay-Z, like this could be like a Rihanna thing, you know? And I think within like a day, our pub, my publisher got it and she just played it for their management. And I think at the time they weren't planning on making an album, but they heard themselves in it, you know? And we had different lyrics. I said like, um, uh, these, uh, uh, something uh, like words made of stones. Uh, I said something about stone, some words turned to dust. Like it it wasn't exactly the lyrics they have there. These are weird adjusted, you know, for their desires. But um, they heard themselves in it. And then they wrote their verses, they wrote the bridge, they played all the instruments, they just took the whole song and created it. But we had like written that melody, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, watching that song just, I mean, this is a top 10 in the US. This is synced on, like, on, um, on NFL. Like I was like all the ESPN college things. It was like, yeah. But I th one of the biggest, thing, the biggest things that happened with that song for me that's always been important to me was that Kobe Bryant walked out to his final game as a Laker two centuries. And you're an LA girl. And I'm an LA girl. And I was in India when this happened. I think I was going through whatever I was going through. And to hear that that had happened, that one of the greatest athletes of all time thought that the song that we were a part of was good enough to be the soundtrack of his incredible moment. I felt so fulfilled in that. And I think being a songwriter on a song like that took a lot of pressure away because it wasn't like it was me, you know, that had to like be in front of everybody like that at that time. But I saw what was possible with the song, you know? I saw, you know, what it's like if something goes top 10. So no matter what I do, no matter how indie or people don't think my music's gonna be whatever they, whatever the ideas they have, I still remember that feeling and I still know it's possible. You know, I still know it can happen again.